I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Addams Family, and this is Gaming Out of Suitcases, my vlog where I highlight some games that I really love that travel well. When you live on the road, it's sometimes hard to find people in your group who love to game as much as you do. Or sometimes you're up for a game and everyone else just isn't. That's why I love cooperative games, because you can always play them solo. But recently I've been turned on to some P&P &P games, that's print and play, that were developed to be solo from the get-go. One of my favorites is Endless Nightmare by Morton Monrad Pedersen. In Endless Nightmare, you move from nightmare to nightmare trying to avoid the shadow. Now, you will eventually be caught and devoured, but the further you get, the more victory points you earn. So the fun part is trying to beat your high score or your friend's high score. There are two versions of the game. First is the basic version. This is what makes the game so great for travel. All that you need to play it is the board itself, which you can print off onto any regular sheet of paper from any computer, one D6 die, and 11 markers. The only stipulation is that one of the markers be identifiably different from the others. I just use 10 pennies and a dime. That's it! Easy peasy! It takes no travel space, no playing space really, and you can take it anywhere. So let's look at the game board. There are nine tracks on the board that you will use your markers on. Now all of the markers start on the black spaces. Your progress through the current nightmare is tracked here, with you moving clockwise, while the shadow's progress is tracked here, moving counterclockwise. If at any time the two markers meet, then you are devoured. The other seven tracks are numbered and show the nightmares you survived, horrors and scares you are experiencing, incantations and mantras that protect you, and your current sanity and courage. Now here's how the gameplay works. At the beginning of the game, and every time you complete a new nightmare, you will randomly choose a nightmare to enter. The description will tell you how long the nightmare is. You will count that many spaces away on your current progress and place the nightmare end marker there. From here on out, your turns consist of four steps that you will complete over and over again until your nightmare is complete, or until you die. Firstly, some nightmares have a nightmare event that has to be resolved at the beginning of every round. Second, you will choose an action and try to accomplish it. Move lets you progress through the nightmare towards its end. Defy horrors and scares lets you decrease the number of evils that you're facing. Performing mantras and incantations helps to protect you against horrors and scares. And finally, calming yourself helps to increase your courage. Now, once you've chosen an action, you will choose a number of action points to assign to it. For example, three move points helps you to move ahead three spaces. Now, to see if you accomplish the action, you must must roll the die. You have to roll above the number of action points that you've assigned to the action. If you do, then you completed it, and you can go ahead and do the action. If you didn't, then you failed the action. No matter what you rolled, put that die off to the side, because you'll use it to complete your next two steps. Now thirdly, the shadow gets to move. Take the die you just rolled and subtract from it the number of nightmares that you've survived. Then look at the shadow chart on the game board. It will tell you if and how many spaces the shadow gets to move. Finally, the scares and horrors affecting you will have a chance to increase. If you rolled a 1 or 2, your scares increase by 1. If you roll a 3, your horrors increase by 1. If you roll a 4, 5, or 6, nothing happens. After you move your markers, it's time to evaluate your sanity and courage. Now first, take a look at the horrors. If your horrors are higher than your incantations, then you will decrease your sanity by the difference. The same goes for scares and mantra, moving your courage down. If your sanity or your courage reaches 0, then you are devoured. It's also fun to note that any time you roll the die, you can choose to decrease or increase the number that you've rolled by two if you take one sanity away. Tricky, tricky. When you lose the game, remember you can't win. Calculate your score by multiplying the number of nightmares that you've survived by 10, and then adding the number of spaces you've moved through your current nightmare. Now, once you've got a good grip on the basic game, give the active version of the game a try. It's pretty much the same thing, except it adds a die board and a few more tokens. What makes this version of the game more challenging is that the active nightmares will make you do actions while you're completing the nightmares. For example, you may have to hold your breath in the drowning nightmare. You know, just to get the adrenaline pumping. The game itself was created for a print and play solitary game contest, and everything that you need to play it can be found on BoardGameGeek.com. Link below! It's a pretty good time! I recommend checking it out. And of course, come back on Wednesday for a more in-depth look at the rules and a full playthrough of both the basic and the active versions of the game. Until then, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! For God's sakes, wake up! And keep gaming!